Hello everyone, this is Amiti Sensei. Today we'll be doing a tutorial on Affinity Designer for beginners. I've covered Affinity Designer in my previous videos many times, but this time using text and gradation features, I want to show you how to make this 10% off coupon banner like this. I have seen there are many of you who are not a designer or creator, yet wanting to try and make a coupon banner like this. So I will teach you how to make a banner with your iPad today. I bought this Affinity Designer. It's around $22, but right now it's around $11 since it's on sales. They offer a great deal right now, so please get one if you can. There are many tools in this app making it seem difficult, but once you get used to it, it should be fine. And as you watch this video and create a banner with me today, it will definitely help you understand better about this app. So please give it a try if you can. Okay, let's start. To start using a 3D designer, tap the plus button at the upper right. Click on create a new canvas at the very left right here. Here at the very top on the left is where you can set the canvas size. And as you touch here, there are options such as web, photo, device, etc. But in case you want to specify a canvas size, select Preset at the bottom. This way, it enables you to set the dimension where you can type in values. So I'll set it 800 times 600 pixels this time. Make sure that the canvas size is set in landscape, tap OK, and now a new canvas is all set. There are many tools you can find on both right and left side in Affinity Designer. This one on the left is called a tool panel, where you can find tools to move, trim, etc. And the one on the right is a layer panel used for color layers as well as filters. Here we have a design mode and a pixel mode at the top. And this is similar to how you can switch between a vector mode and a raster mode. This time we'll mainly use a design mode. So make sure to set the square mark at the upper left turn on. Now we'll work on the background first. To create background, grab a rectangle tool, the third one from the bottom in the tool panel, and select color on the right. Grab any color, but this time set the left one blue and the right one with diagonal lines. Now drag it like this, it gets painted in a solid color. Grab a move tool which lets you move it, zoom in or zoom out. In case you want to switch with a different color, touch it and just choose a different color from the color picker mentioned earlier. This way you can change the color as many times as you want later, so make sure to set it from here. Today I want to introduce you to a different tool and it's called a gradation tool. There's this tool called Gradation in the center in the tool panel on the left, so select this and drag it somewhere on the screen. And now you can create such a beautiful gradation like this. You could change the angle or the color later, so if I touch the edge right here and choose a different color from the color picker, the color gets changed. The same thing for the opposite side. You can easily change the color as you can see. If I touch around the center for instance, something like this new point appears again, and here too, you can set the color of your choice. So just like this, as you apply gradation on top of the other, you can even make Instagram icon like gradation like this. This time I will be making bluish gradation. I want to give it kind of refreshing and summer like looks. Right now we have three color points in total. So I'm basically working on this gradation by having these color buttons on both ends and one in the middle. Next, let's start inserting text. For text, you should see this icon that says A in the tool panel on the left, so tap it, and here you can just type in, in text. This time I'm going to put 10 of 10% first. Once you're done, grab a move tool, a move tool at the top. Once you type in text, remember to grab a move tool to change the text size, adjust the position, etc. 
You can also find the letter A in the property part on the right, right here, the third one from the bottom. Here you can set the font, change the color, or city center line, or make the font thicker, etc. So make sure to set your ideal font by adjusting these options. When adjusting the letter spacing, there is an option that says position. Try and move the tracking slider to both sides. And you could probably see how the spacing between letters 1 and 0 got smaller just now. So tracking is for setting letter spacing. After this, we'll work on percent of 10% as well as off. So copy and paste them. To copy and paste, touch anywhere on the screen with two fingers, drag an object with your Apple Pencil like this. And now you should have the same object copy. So while keeping this state, change the text as well as the size. This way you can easily add some new text in the same font. A tip when making a coupon like this for numbers, or for 10 in this case, it will be better to set it bigger, as it will look better with the number standing out. So when creating design with a number, remember to set it bigger like this. For other parts including percent and off, set them with its height set according to the number 10. There should be some invisible lines here and there, the top and the bottom, so I suggest to position them according to these lines. Once you're done with the text, let's go ahead and start grouping. Select all the objects like this when grouping, and as you look at the layers here, three layers are selected right now, but tap the top one right here. And now it's grouped, getting only one. This makes things so much easier later, so please remember to do grouping. Once you've done these, there's one more tool I want you to remember. I'll talk about a join mode from here. For the join mode, as you tap on this icon with three dots right here at the upper left in the layer panel, there's an option that says path through. As you tap this, many options appear on the screen like this. Let me play around with these a bit. You can see that the color is changing like this. What it does is that it sets color for the overlap area between the layer for 10% off selected right now and the gradation layer underneath. For instance, this time I set an overlay. And with this overlay, you can apply some effects that make it look as if a flash of light is added. So this time we'll apply overlay and work on it. This is good already as it is, but I want to make it a bit more bright. So duplicate these layers that are grouped. To do so, tap the duplicate button from this icon with three dots at the upper left. This will add the same layer of this 10% off with the overlay apply, and this will make it more bright. So the more you add layers on top of the other, the stronger the overlay effect it reflects. So you could follow this way to do that too. For these texts themselves, let's group them again. We have two group layers here, so I'll select both and group them so they can be put together into one. This will make it easier to move or adjust later, so make sure to group them. Next, let's start adding text to the bottom. We are going to put the date here, so first have this rectangle shape like this. Since it's got some gradation right now, switch it to white color from here. Tap the three dots icon in the layer panel to adjust the opacity level at the very top right here, making it lighter, etc. Then we'll add text on top of that.
Once you've done these, at last we'll add handwritten text. There are things we have to do when adding handwritten text using Affinity Designer. The first thing to do is to add a layer. To add a new layer, you should find where it says pixel layer from the plus button here, so add it. Now you should have a new layer at the top, so while keeping this, right now it's on the design mode as mentioned in the very beginning, but let's switch it to a pixel mode. These handwriting brushes can be found on pixel mode, so while keeping it on pixel mode, select your brush from the right side here and start writing. There are so many brushes in Affinity Designer, so please check them out here. They have this acrylic brush, a dry media brush, or this marker brush, and many more. So grab a brush of your choice and type in your handwritten text here. I want to use a ballpoint pen this time, so it's a very basic one. Using a brush called a round soap brush, I think, in the basic box. I'm going to start writing here like this. On a side note, when you want to change the brush thickness, you can find a slider at the bottom, so set the size smaller there, and then you can write text in thin strokes. Alright, just like this, it's complete. What do you think? You can always change the gradation, text, etc. later as much as you want. So when you want to change gradation, just select the gradation option here, switch it to a design mode, touch the gradation option where you can set the color, etc. So those who want to add some variation to your design, please do that here. For example, I created this blue banner today, but if I want to create some reddish gradation instead, simply duplicate this canvas itself, and change the color from here like this. Actually, I want to show you a way to export at last. To export, tap the selection button at the upper left and choose export. While JPEG is selected, tap the share button at the bottom left. Tap save image and now this data should be saved in your camera roll. This is pretty easy to do, so please give it a try. I have my online community called iPad Mate where me and my members share anything about iPad, and I also do online seminars. We have what we call assignment on a regular basis too, and this 10% off coupon banner we covered today was actually one of their assignments. As you can see here, everyone did such an amazing job and they created this banner design with Affinity Designer. It may be interesting to include some photos like this one too. One of my members used a picture of knitting wool for the background, or there was someone who designed an American comic book style too. And every single one of these is just really unique and interesting, and I'll leave the link to this website down below, so please check them out and refer to them as you design yours. In my iPad Mac community, I offer a lot of tutorials that are exclusive to my members only, so if you want to learn more about iPad, please check out my iPad Mac community too. I'll leave the link to that down below too. Okay, that's all for today. How was it? Please give a thumbs up if you liked this video, and if you have any ideas or requests for me to do a tutorial on something using Affinity Designer, please let me know in the comments section too. Alright, thank you for watching! Bye bye!